To all the Helldivers 2 players out there, I want to wish you congratulations on a job well done. I'm very proud of you for advocating for what you want and not budging an inch until you got it. I said in another video that many in the gaming industry were watching this situation to learn what lessons they could from it. Developers, publishers, gamers, etc. Hopefully they learn a little bit of respect for their customers, but time will tell on that one. What exactly was the tipping point for Sony though? Did all the pressure from gamers, game journalists, and social media start to get the higher-ups asking questions? Wondering where all the smoke was coming from? Was it when the game's rating completely tanked? Or was it when refunds started getting issued? Sony admitted they're still learning what's best for PC players, but that's a tiny, tiny admission compared to the colossal screw-up they had on their hands. While we would all like for them to learn not to screw or scam gamers, we can't make the assumption that that's the lesson they're gonna walk away with here. They may just use different tactics going forward, so watch for that. Honestly, instead of forcing a PSN account, maybe they provide a cosmetic incentive if you set one up willingly. And thinking about that, I'd actually be okay with it because you're presenting players with a choice rather than forcing them into something they don't want. The relationship between gamers and big developers has been getting more and more contentious lately and I don't like that. I'd like to envision a gaming industry where there's mutual respect between gamers, journalists, developers, and publishers, where we all work together to keep the industry alive, innovating, and thriving. Is that realistic? No, probably not. But is it worth working towards? Absolutely. If we, as gamers, throw our hands up and continue to take it on the chin with all these unpopular anti-customer actions being thrown at us, then we've already sacrificed whatever power and control we had. That's why it's important for us to speak up whenever crap like this happens and to do it together, even if it isn't a game we play or a console we own. It will invariably affect all of us. I saw that many people didn't understand the nature of why players were upset with the PlayStation Network requirement, even though it was on the Steam page at the time of purchase. Aside from the fact that the game would have been unplayable for people living in countries where PSN wasn't available, despite the game being sold to them, the issue was largely because it was enforced after people had already spent a great deal of time playing the game. Many players didn't want to have anything to do with Sony and couldn't understand why a PSN account was even necessary when they've already been playing the game for three months without it and, in many cases, didn't even own a PlayStation. Added to that is a general distrust of Sony in their recent security breach issues and that they were doing this for player safety, which is laughable. I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention the Stella Blade censorship controversy as part of the overall frustration that gamers have had with Sony lately. The other thing I saw was people using the words industry standard or common practice and they were throwing them around as justification for this sudden PSN enforcement. It's the industry standard to sign up for an account to play a game, yada 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 yada. Look, industry standard or common practice doesn't mean it's something that can't be changed. There's nothing hard-coded about it. Look around you, we see things change all the time. A few short years ago it was industry standard for most people to be on-site at work. Now, remote work or hybrid environments are the new standard. It used to be common practice to smoke everywhere, even in hospitals. That certainly changed, hasn't it? So when someone says account linking, microtransactions, or day one DLC are industry standard, doesn't make it gospel, doesn't mean it's good for us, and it doesn't have to mean it's your standard. If you don't like it, work to change it, because we've seen clear as day what happens when we let these things slide. The battle for Helldivers 2 was a significant one, and the victory should be savored. However, as always, we need to be vigilant to protect our favorite hobbies from those who would seek to destroy it in the name of greed. So what do you think about how everything went down with the Helldivers 2 situation? What lessons do you think people took away from all of this? As always, leave a comment below and we'll chat about it. And if you like the kinds of videos I make, please consider sharing it and even subscribe it for more. And until then, my friends, keep gaming. It's funny, I had so many half-written scripts, screenshots, notes from Helldivers 2 videos that I was trying to make, but you guys were so damn efficient with keeping the pressure on that I've had to scrap them because the story kept evolving so damn quick. I'm not complaining, that's my problem, not yours. But looking at the big picture, it's a good problem to have.